In this video, I'm gonna help you to configure NAT on your Palo Alto firewall. So now we're gonna configure network address translation for NAT for the network 10.0.1.0. I have a Linux in this network, and then later we're gonna try the access to the internet using this Linux, and we're gonna see if NAT is working. So the first thing we need to do is to go to policies. I'm configuring my firewalls using Panorama, but if you configure it directly on your firewall, it's actually the same process. Well, except for this pre and post rules, on the file you can configure directly on under NAT. My panorama, I'm gonna use the post rules. And my file is gonna be the PAVM. So I'm gonna add a new rule. I'm gonna call this rule NAT for netsums.com. And I'm gonna leave NAT type IPv4, the original packet. I'm gonna add a source zone. In my case, it's called inside. Probably in your case, it's gonna be also inside. My destination zone outside. Probably in your case, also the same. Destination interface and service. Service. If you want to enter something, you can. I'm gonna leave as any. And then here, my source address. As I said before, I'm doing this for the network 10.0.1.0. And my destination address is going to be netsums.com. I have a, an object for this FQGN. The translated packet, I choose here on translation, translation type. I have three options to choose dynamic IP and port, dynamic IP or static IP. Probably the one that you want is the dynamic IP and port. The dynamic IP is like this. You get assigned dynamic IP addresses for NAT but the ports stay the same, so it means that you, own, you still have this one-to-one -one IP address. So if you have like a NAT pool of 10 IP addresses, for example, you can only supply 10 concurrent sessions for this NAT, no more than that. The same will be this for the static IP. The, dif the difference is that the dynamic IP, you don't assign an IP address, you assign a pool of IP addresses, and they are dynamically assigned to the, to the net network translation. In this case here, the dynamic IP and port, you, you use also the port so that you can use one net IP address for more source IP addresses. So you can have a pool, as in my case, I'm gonna configure now. I have a, a, a network slash 24, and I'm gonna use only one dynamic IP, only one IP address for net. And the fire in the end builds a table with which ports, source ports the fire used for which session. So when the packets come back, the fire knows, okay, this, session here corresponds to this original session. That's how the firewall does. It changes the source port and builds a, a table in order to keep the network translation sessions. So I'm gonna click here. Under address type, I'm not gonna choose translated address. I'm gonna do everything using my interface address. And I'm choosing the Ethernet 1.1, which is my outside interface. Under IP type, I'm gonna leave IP. If you have active, active firewall and you are implementing floating IP, which I think is gonna be seldom that you use an, a configuration like this, I'm gonna leave an IP here and then here I'm gonna choose the IP address of my outside interface. I know my outside interface also has a private IP address. This is a firewall that's inside my network. It's not facing the internet, but I just wanted to show you in this video how you can use NET. So the traffic's gonna come from the network 10.0.1.0 and it's gonna be translated to the IP address 172.16.0.101. We're gonna see this on the file later on. Here we don't need anything, here we don't need anything. Translation type, we can leave at none. We don't need any destination address translation. We need only a source address translation. Let's click on okay. So there it is, this is my rule. And I'm gonna commit this configuration, then I'm gonna test it. So the commit is through and I'm on my a Linux server in the network 10.0.1.0. It has the IP address 17 and I'm gonna do a wget netsums.com. So I'm just generating some traffic so we can see it on the file. There you go. And then let's take a look at the file, what it was monitored there. So let's go take a look now at the file. If I go to monitor, and I already have here my filter to the IP address from my Linux server and the IP address from netsums.com. 
you can see here that the file that I open the column, if you don't know, you can click on this little, let me show you again. If you come here with the mouse and you hover on top of the menu, you can see that there's a little arrow facing down. If you click on the arrow and click on columns, you can select which columns you want to see. So I have selected net applied, net source IP, and net destination IP to add to the standard columns that, they, that the file already shows. Net applied is either yes or no. In this case, it's a yes, so it's good. So it's matching the, our rule that we prepared. The source IP address, the original one was 10.0.117. And here you can see the IP address that was applied to net, 172.16.0.101. So this is now the new source IP address going to the, yeah, I won't say going to the internet because I have another net router on the way to the internet. So it's going to the, so the net router is seeing only this IP address and not this one anymore. So this one is hidden now. And the destination IP is the same as before. So here in this field, destination, this not destination IP, you should see the same. Unless you do some destination app, which is not what we are doing now. So it's working. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video until the end. But before you go, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button, it helps us a lot. Maybe this video can help you further with the Palo Alto file configuration. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.